All right, so we made it to this fisherman's rock. Um, we are here. So what is this thing anyway? I don't know, it looks like some garbage made stuff to scare birds. Yeah, like a scarecrow or something. And this one, uh, it has a like, a angry happy face. Now let's turn this light down so we get more ambient. Oh. Remember you said like it looked too bright when you did the flash? This is why, because when this light's really bright, mm -hmm. or the background light, it gets darker, see? Yeah. But if you turn down your main light and you add a little bit of light, then it looks more natural. Okay. Although this light is very blue, so you would also use the gel and make it match the background color. Mm. Oh. And here we have... Mm? There's two buttons on that. Press the one on the side. Side. So if you feel around the bottom here, mm -hmm. if you feel here, you can feel it. There's another button and that you can do brighter. No, no, not the round button. There. Oh. There you go. That is the fisherman's rock. I guess so. You see that long stick stuff? It looks like a. What's that? What do you use to catch the fish? A fishing rod? Yeah, it looks like a fishing rod. Oh. All right, so we have that, that, and then we have this, this weird thing, which someone made. Let's go around the back. Looks quite nice with the Hong Kong lights behind it. Mm. And it's Dimmux. It's got the, the hat is a Dimmux, which is a bookstore. Oh. Um, I think it's an Australian brand or something, or owned, but I've seen them in Hong Kong before. Like English books. Alright. Go back. I want to record for a while, because I want to see what happens when the battery runs out. We didn't go long, there's other... I've got 13% left on this battery. Okay. Yeah. Looks like someone had a snack here. But they obviously... Ah. Well, they didn't uh, bring the rubbish along with them. It's very um. Or maybe it's like it's brought by the tide. No, but look at the way it's positioned. It looks oh. like someone ate there. Okay. Oh, actually, actually, you're probably right. It looks very. You're probably right. It looks like it's been washed up. But it also yeah, looks like someone that, had those, lunch here, right? So those bad bunch of stuff should yeah. be brought by the sea. This is all the rubbish. I guess some people lost their slippers when they were swimming. <laughs> but there's two of them, so if you want a free pair of slippers, I mean they're different brands, but you've got yeah. the black one and the right one. And if they happen to be left and right shoe, then you can get you can score yourself a free pair of footwear if you come to Peng Chao. If you come here. Yeah. Although they look like kid size, so don't know if they'll fit you. Also to note, there's a bit of a breeze here and I've got the uh, both Rode lav mics with the windshield on it. So it'd uh, be interesting to listen to this back in post and to, uh, to see how, how effective the windshield is at blocking out the wind noise. And I can hear it with my ears. Um, but yeah, they do have that little cap on the lavalier. So that's not Ping Chao, that's another island, right? Mm. We'd have to swim to get there or get get on one of the boats. Mm. But Lantau, it's probably Lantau. Call a taxi. Yeah. I've never tried a water taxi. 
don't think it's very cheap. But I guess if you need to get home here, and the ferry stopped running at 12 or something, right? Mm. Yeah, does it? Yeah, but it starts at 3 something. Oh, so you just have to wait. If you miss the last ferry, you just need to go to 7 Eleven, get a few beers. No, 7 Eleven here. <laughs> no? But you can just. Oh, or sit, sit on the on beach. The, yeah. And meditate for three hours, and then you can get the first ferry out at 3. Why 3 o'clock for the first ferry? Uh, I think because some fishermen goes out and. Three? Wow. I guess so. So early. I usually like sleep. I'm in bed and trying to fall asleep at three sometimes. <laughs> usually two or one, but um, I keep trying to sleep early. But it's a uh, it's hard to have that discipline and or the habit or whatever. I mean, I can get it for a little while and then I just sleep late again and then reset to that late sleeping now i do want to run this battery down to zero to make sure i can still use the uh, gyro stabilization so we're on eight percent now this part two video i guess can be a bit shorter and it will just end when the battery runs out oh we have a little rest area very nice. Yeah. With a bit of a shelter. Let's see the view from here. Oh, quite nice. You can see on the camera, look. Mm. Look at all the light pollution. See that bright area? Yeah, I can. There. That's why you can't see stars from here. There's too much. You can light. see stars at night. Yeah, later. but today's too cloudy. Usually but if you, you go can't. like to countryside in Australia, and you look at the stars, you can see like thousands of them. It's mm. incredible. Or probably places of remote China would also be similar, right? Mm. Hungry. Let's go. All right. So we're heading back. Can yeah. we go around this way? Yeah, we got this. It's still something to look. So this is a loop, apparently. Yeah. And this is also very interesting. It's very kind or responsible or convenient mm -hmm. of the government to provide a rubbish bin. Oh, yeah. Out all the way here. I mean, in Australia, the government says, just take the rubbish with you. But here, I guess they want to keep it clean and the population density can support the services. But there is a rubbish bin right out here in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. So you can throw your rubbish here and not litter this very nice beach. Hmm. Bit of a step and we're back on this path. Also, the path is very nicely concreted. Mm. Yes. It's very convenient, even on a nature walk in Hong Kong. A lot of places are paved. Mm. And by the way, if you're watching this, feel f free to fast forward through these boring bits where you don't get to see our faces or in fact, the whole video, or you can just skip the whole video because I don't know. So, like I said before, someone's watching this stuff. Like, maybe it's just bots that are doing it. I don't know. <laughs> Not my bots, but some someone or some thing is pressing play. But then again, they're not watching the whole thing. I think maybe they got sucked into the start and then realized how boring it is and then clicked <laughs> away. Because I can also see the user retention and usually no one makes it to the end everyone's died before <laughs> they've got to the end died of boredom once they realize the quality of these videos and the content of these videos but uh, we're on five percent now okay. so we don't have to wait too long for this battery to die and for me to find out if i can apply the gyro stabilization 
uh, to a file if it ends the file properly. I mean, it should, but like I said before, I was at the Sony store testing out uh, one of the lenses, a 10 to, 10 to 18 millimeter APS-C, which I thought could work on this. Uh, but I took the lens off without cutting it intentionally because I wanted to see if I could swap lenses and then put another lens without cutting the video. Um, and uh, I found I wasn't able to stabilize the camera footage, the footage using the gyro information. So um, this is now the test to see if I can, if the battery runs out. Good thing to know, right? If you're filming something and you need to get as much out of it, or you just forget, you just forget that your battery's low. And then later on you find out you can't stabilize it and you really need it stabilized, then you do have a bit of a problem. That's the beach. If you hold down, I'll do it. If you hold down the other button on this light, it can uh, go full. That's quite a bright little light, this one. Oh. But uh, the camera's not going to expose for it because it's the foreground's too bright. Mm. And I should do a review on these lights because I, I quite like this gear. It uh, is the Nightcore, the Nightcore um, something something. I forget the. Skent, I forget the model number because it's kind of a random bunch of numbers and letters. And Shu, you bought some lights recently. Yeah, Tell us this, about that. This is, those are so good. I think it's even brighter than this one. And they have so many functions. You can adjust the color temperature and adjust the color. And it has a lot of modes like flash mode, ambulance mode, pulp mode. Uh, and, and they have KTV mode, TV mode, just so much. I yeah. think it's very convenient. You brought actual photography lights, RGB ones. Yeah, I like that one a lot. We tried, we, we tried, to, we planned to play that at night last time, but we didn't have time. We want yeah. to play a long exposure and with the color change in the oh, middle. Yeah. And I saw you did some light painting, which looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to do that with the RGB one to change color. It because it can change color without levels. It's like a smoothly change color. Oh, stepless. Step, stepless. Yeah. Yeah. Like instead of steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No it's steps. A smooth. Yeah, smooth change the color. So I think it might be fun to have a light paint. Oh yeah. And. <laughs> so dark you won't be able to see my face but good thing about this much. yeah but actually yeah it would be a good blogging light so you could rig it to this camera yeah although i don't know where you would attach it because i don't have the cage I'll show you. but the hot shoe has been taken up by the microphone you see but mine has is one hot shoe two three. Oh yeah you've got a hot shoe splitter yeah kind of the hot shoe it goes from one hot shoe which is the little thing you put the flash on top of your camera mm -hmm. which is actually quite ubiquitous uh, and it splits it into three cold shoes which are a cold shoe means it doesn't have any electrical terminals on it it's just used for attaching accessories oh, oh yeah 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 and one of the accessories on this is the uh, road mic you're on a sony voice recorder mm -hmm. so i have to go in post and add that add your audio oh. in separately uh, which is not too hard to do you can do it manually mm -hmm. or i use a software called Plur plural eyes as in more than one eye Plur plural eyes mm -hmm. uh, but they haven't updated it for I the don't new final why, cut why it's necessary to use a software a uh, good question oh now it's showing me the low battery warning uh, but anyway uh, the reason you use software is because uh, it's quite difficult to do on your manually, right? You have to find the right time and put it there. And you, you have to do it for each and every clip, which can be yeah. quite time consuming. If you're shooting something like a film, you have hundreds of clips. You might have more than one voice recorder. You might have 10 voice recorders if you've got multiple oh. actors. Then it's going to be a, it's going to, what's it called? be a lot larger in terms of 
effort. Workload? Yeah, but uh, exponential sort of workload. Every time, because you, you might have more than one camera and you might have more than one audio recorder. But how does that software work? Does this audio recorder have some time? Yeah. No, it, it matches it from the audio so it can what? hear. So it, it compares the audio? Yeah. Wow. And it uses like the, That's it doesn't actually use AI, but it uses an algorithm to figure out where they match. Oh, that's cool. And then it can line them up. And of course the camera records audio. And, the, and so it doesn't look at the visuals, it looks at the audio. Mm. But to be safe, when you're filming a film, you use what's called a slate, which is that checkerboard where you clap. Uh -huh. And that puts a big spike in the audio where oh. you can see. And you can use that to, no, you can use that to, um, to synchronize it. Uh, they, oh. I mean, you had to before this software, but now you can just use software. I and see. the other thing that it's very good for is sometimes like an audio recorder will record but at the end let's say you do an hour recording at the end of it it will be out it'll be just off by a second or something because its sense of time is different to your camera sense of time mm -hmm. so by by the end of an hour it's going to be um off by half a second or something which is enough to I mean, that's a long time. You, you'll hear a, like a double echo. Actually, probably not even half a second, like a few tenths of a second. But you'll hear it come out of sync. And so what the software can do is it can analyze and check that it's, realize that it's come out of sync and it can uh, stretch the auto to, uh, to make it align properly. Mm. Okay. And very important if you have, you, d you know, it just saves you time and makes the whole editing experience not as uh, annoying. So it's, it's quite good. That said, it's quite expensive. I think it's, if you buy it outright, that, well, actually they just got acquired by a company called Maxor and they mm -hmm. want you to pay subscription for it. But um, you can also pay for it outright, which means you own it until they release the next version, which then you've got to upgrade to it. Oh. But um, I think I paid 300 US dollars for this software uh, many years ago and I've used it for many projects um, oh. but yeah it's kind of a little expensive and uh, it would be cool if it came as part of the Final Cut Pro or other software what are you doing? see? see something? oh a spider web yeah. ah it sticks to you <laughs> ew so uh yeah, that said, there is an automatic synchronization in Final Cut and I believe Premiere, but Plural Eyes is a lot better and mm. you can do everything. It, you just chuck, chuck in all your audio things, all your media, and it just synchronizes it all in one go. Uh, it does an okay job at it. It's also a little annoying, um, but anyway. It's, yeah, in general, it's okay. Oh, someone's going to ask me why it's annoying, and uh, wow, the reason... Wow, someone is here. Oh, yeah? There's someone behind that we can't see. The reason it's annoying is when you import stuff, let's say you've already worked on your project, at least I find this in Final Cut, and then you want to synchronize it later, you've got to, it kind of re-imports fresh versions of the media, and you ended up, you end up with double files like one instance of the media that is what you imported in Final Cut and then a second instance that plural eyes imported so then you end up with double files and it's kind of annoying oh um, yeah. but anyway that's quite a well yeah I guess that's quite useful information for someone considering a purchase of plural eyes so mm. did I answer your question yes yeah. she says yes All right, now we are on 19 minutes and we're on the low battery warning. So hopefully this battery will run out and I'll be able to um, test later when I get into Final Cut if it will um, stabilize. And if it did, I guess I'll just leave, or it, I'll, I'll leave the answer in the comments um, and talk about it on the next video, uh, especially if it didn't. If it did, then I'll probably just move on to the next topic. But if it didn't, don't worry, I'll be complaining.
All right. Well, All right. it's a very boring video of watching us walk along the road. Maybe I should show my face for a bit. And is there still someone behind us? Um, not really. She's just on the beach. I don't know what she's oh, doing. Oh, someone on the beach. You didn't see that? No, I didn't. Probably relaxing or meditating. It's a girl. Oh. Very tiring holding up the camera like this, even two-handed. All right, back to the path. So what's for dinner? Barbecue, do you want? Yeah, but can we get food still? Yeah. Or do you have barbecue food already? Oh, we better buy some, don't have much. Because it's seven o'clock, but I guess... Welcome, welcome close and ten. Oh, cool. And you showed me the thick steaks. That oh, that's yummy. from another place. I'm not sure. But there's so many cockroaches around your area. Oh, you want to eat that? No, but... I will support you, but I won't eat. I will feel meat. But, um... All the cockroaches ran out of your uh, sew sewerage. So horrible. Yeah. Um, but I just... Your barbecue is on the outside, so I wonder if they... No, I sh shouldn't, because I killed them immediately. Yeah, but they'll come back and eat the barbecue food. No, that's that just reminds a me of a reminds me of a barbecue I had in Hong Kong where um, I went to someone's. It was a communal rooftop, and then we were going to have a barbecue during winter, so it was quite cool. And then we went to light the barbecue, the fire. It was like a gas barbecue. Yeah. And then like. One by one, about 20 cockroaches started coming out of this barbecue. What? And the girls were like horrified and crying. And we were like, oh, it's a bit yuck because the barbecue's actually...